I'd really wanted to fly a Spitfire ever since I was in high school. When I was in high school, it was the Battle of Britain, and that's when the Spitfire was a rage. I'd read about them ever since it was first developed. General Eaker and Air Marshal Peck played bridge together, and they decided that we should get Spitfires. The range on the Spitfire was as good or better than the F-5. You had better roll rate, you had better rate of climb. We didn't need any special training. I just started flying it. The Mark 11 that we had was a conversion from the Mark 9 that was the main British fighter at the time. They took out the guns and put in leading edge gas tanks. And we had two 36 inch focal length cameras mounted in back of us. A Spitfire was painted blue. It was called uh, PRU Blue, which is Photo Reconnaissance Unit Blue. And that was supposed to blend in better with the sky. I always flew unarmed and alone. Photographing the target, I'd come to the right of it, pull the nose around until I'd level out, and then I'd turn on the cameras and make a run across the target. And I'd usually make three or four runs across one target. If I was going to a certain target, I'd play like I was going by it, and if you went by the target, came around in back of them, a lot of times they wouldn't even fire at you. But I went all the way down the Ruhr, and they fired at me all the way down. I had them popping off my wings and everything else. All you do is just keep flying, keep your heading, and uh, try to ignore it. When it bursts, it's just a dirty black ball going off. People say, well, I saw 16 rounds or something. I don't know how you can tell that you saw 16 rounds. In fact, you're paying attention to something that you should be thinking about something else instead of counting shells, because when you're making a mapping run, you just keep flying. We had a Williamson printer that would print thousands of them in no time at all, because we took five million pictures of just our outfit. I figured that my dance card wasn't filled until I went to Berlin. I took off and it was beautiful. Immediately I got over the North Sea and I started climbing about 30,000 feet. And I had eight targets in Berlin. And so I started taking pictures and I noticed that one camera, the light wasn't working on it and I didn't know whether the camera was out or whether it was actually working. So I figured I had to make another run to make sure that I got the targets, so I made about three or four runs over each target, which took quite a while. I think I figured it was half an hour over Berlin. I could see fires burning everywhere because the B-17s had raided just before I got there. I flew back to the base and I really felt bad about it because I thought, here I went all that way, spent half an hour, and I might not have gotten a picture. And so I went up to the mess hall and this captain came up about an hour later. He said, we got the film back. He said, you got everything on one camera, so you covered all the targets. Yeah, I've had even fighter pilots call me a liar that I couldn't go to Berlin in a Spitfire. In fact, I almost got a fight one night over Mose Lake over that because they said Spitfires didn't go that far. But uh, I got the Distinguished Flying Cross. The two pictures I sent you, we have Spitfire PA-944 crashed, and then there was a picture of you, and I didn't know if it was you or not. It was just in the collection with that one. What happened that day? Well, I was during the highway behind the Ruhr, behind the Monernetter dams. My headset cord got caught, and on the side we had an emergency down system for the landing gear, and it was a CO2 bottle and all it had was an upright handle on it. What happened, my headset got caught in it, and when I tugged on my headset, set off the CO2 bottle, which locked the gear up. And so I flew around for about an hour. I'd fly upside down and everything and work trying to get it down. In fact, I even took the crowbar that's in the door and put it in the handle, and they figure I stretched the cable to the landing gear by about an inch from pulling on the bin. And finally, I was run so low on fuel, they told me where to land on the grass. I just was hoping I didn't cartwheel or anything.
and our flight surgeon was taking a movie of it, and he thought that I was just practicing and I was going to come in and take another pass at it and land. And he, luckily, he had his camera on, and he got the whole thing on the... Do you have that? No, he, he has it. Have you ever seen well, it? Well, he's... No. And he's dead now, probably, because he was older. Okay, well, let's show you the slides that we have. Let me fire this up. Now, what are these off? Okay, now we have about a minute of film we think is from your base. Yeah, there's a C-47. The first light landing I ever made, I landed at Le Bourget at night. What kind of plane's that? The C-47, the DC-3. What's that one? That's a Spitfire. Oh, that's me. Hell, that's a picture. That's what Savage took. There's Bliss, and the other one was Dixon. They ended up a four-star general. Hell, I've never seen that before. Where'd you get that? That's a wooden prop, you know. Wooden. Yeah. See, there's no bulletproof glass on a, like a fighter. Why was that? Wait. Well, they figured if you, you, they got that close, you're dead anyway. I'll be damned. That's motion. Savage lives in San Bernardino. He was a doctor there. You want to see it again? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is there any chance to get that? Because my oh, kids. Oh yeah, are, uh, you can have it. My kids would love to see it. There it is. Poppy Dean. <laughs> get that cigarette out of your mouth. Yeah, hell, I flew that thing as soon as they put a prop on it, the radiators. Did you say you have a piece of the prop of that? Yeah, I had it. Where'd they? Oh, here it is. That's amazing that you have that. <laughs> and you just keep it, you just keep it in your, in your closet yeah. there? Um, okay, so you said you knew the doctor had been filming this. How did you know that? He told me. Yeah, he was our flight surgeon. Jim, Jim Savage. Well, the reason we have these photos is we're related to Jim Savage. I'll be damned. Well, so he was my great uncle, and actually, Jason, our producer, is his grandson. Oh. Over there in the corner. <laughs> Why? Well, I, I met your grandmother then. Oh, yeah? In Palo Alto. She was living in Palo Alto, and I stopped in to see her after I came back. Very nice. I liked it. He was a very nice man. Well, he had two suitcases full of this stuff. So we have a lot of footage for you to watch, and you can, of course, keep it as well. OK. That was the sweetest airplane. Any pilot should fly a Spitfire at least once. Telling my kids about it, never had it. <laughs> <laughs>